Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. I am the Niche Fragrance Collector. I love creativity. I want to be creative and I love observing and experiencing creativity around me. I also love spontaneity. I love moments that just happen. I find that spontaneity creates serendipity at the same time. There's one comment that I love using around my friends and family and that is, I'm about to go rogue on this. The moment people hear me say I'm about to go rogue, they're like, uh oh button down the hatches or you know something's about to go down. Those who are familiar with the channel have seen the fragrance adventures. Now these fragrance adventures are not planned. Sandra and I, my wife, we go to a particular location and I know in my head I know that I want to film something there that is more related to perfume and life. The what that is or what the narrative to that storyline Make it up on the spot. Recently we were in Paris and I knew that I wanted to recreate la, like a Milan boutique hopping experience, but I had no idea which boutiques I wanted to showcase. I wanted the moment just to take me. I went into the Pierre Guillaume boutique and in an instant I thought, oof, I really would like to film in this particular location. The moment you open the door, there is this, I think it's a brass monkey head or gorilla's head. And as soon as you walk in, this spirit animal is looking at you. That was one thing that was impressive. The second one was the amount of perfumes that were before me. It was a little bit overwhelming, I have to be honest, because this is now one brand, Pierre Guillaume, and these are all his fragrances. In Australia, we don't have the brand, so this was my first experience, and I'm like, whoa, how do I understand the rhythm of this place? I was fortunate to have a young man in there by the name of Julien, if you are fortunate to be in the Pierre Guillaume store in Paris and Julien is there, count your lucky stars, the man was awesome. In four seconds flat, he quickly explained to me the rhythm of how the fragrance worked and man, I was off and away. Now, if you're new to Pierre Guillaume's fragrances, I would actually recommend that you start here. This is Cosette 2.0. This is a beautiful, beautiful woody amber fragrance. Now you may say to yourself, but Woody Ambry is not my jam. It's not what I do. I'll come back to you as to why this is an important origin piece that you need in, uh, in your collection. So those who do love Woody Ambry fragrance, this is divine. For me, I fell in love with this in an instant. One of the key components in here is patchouli and I am a patchouli fiend. I love that beautiful, musty, woody component that the patchouli has. It starts off with this wonderful, sweet, tone to it. Okay, so the way that Pierre shares construction of his fragrances, he's a little bit like Alessandro Galtieri, which reveals no notes. You make up your own mind. And I've noticed that Pierre has a, a semblance to that. He'll share some of the notes, but he doesn't show you the, the olfactory pyramid. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to that sort of thing. I love seeing what the top notes are, what the heart, etc., etc. But in this case here, and as Julien explained to me when I was there, is that Pierre wants you to develop your own olfactory connections to the fragrance. Put the notes away and focus on what this fragrance is saying to you. Again, he has revealed some of the notes, so it's not in the same way as Galtieri does, but he allows you to now uh, let the fragrance speak to you. For me, on opening, as I mentioned, I do get a sweet caramel style of note, but not gourmand. So when you think caramel, you're thinking almost lactose, that milkiness, that sweetness. If anything, it's a bit more leaning towards like a maple syrup, but not maple syrup, because sometimes like take Clive Christian E, it has that beautiful maple syrup-like quality, which is quite sweet. This is not overtly sweet, but I go back. There is a sweetness on that opening, which does linger for about 30 or so minutes. It's divine. On opening, I'm instantly, I was instantly in love. I'm just getting, I'm detecting that slight patchouli under, under toe that's, that's going through the fragrance. For me, this is a sensual masculine fragrance. If I would think of a sensual female fragrance, I would put notes of ylang ylang, a tuberose, a little bit of magnolia for just that touch of animalic component to it. And I find that this is almost, it's, its companion when it comes to a masculine sensual fragrance. The, some of the notes that I pick up on here, it's definitely that patchouli. It does have a tobacco note in there. There is a chocolate vibe to it. It is warm, it is ambery. There is a beautiful, deep sensuality to this particular fragrance. This is a cooler month fragrance. There are very warm tones to it. I don't know if it would play as well in summer, and I'll talk about Cosa Verde in just a moment. It's its companion, essentially. 
but Cose 2.0 is definitely a nice cool weather winter style fragrance. When it starts off, it does have a sweet tone, but it is very ambery and wood-like, so nowhere near anything gourmand. It does have some spicy components, which I enjoy, and actually that spicy component fluctuates all the way through the fragrance, but it never moves away from being such a warm, deep, sensual, woody fragrance. For me, the longevity on this fragrance is six plus hours. The sillage on it is low. However, the projection is a moderate. I've had a number of occasions where people who are sitting next to me have detected the fragrance and commented how good it smells. So I mentioned earlier that if you're gonna start with any of the Pierre Guillaume fragrances, that this is the one that needs to commence. In a way, this is the origin story right here. So cause, what does that mean? I actually thought it was a French word. I, the, the, there's an accent on the E and I thought oh, it's, a, it's a French word, cause. In fact, it's a constructed word. It's coming from the word se ose, which means to be daring. So to, to be, I guess to be bold. For me, I see this as Pierre's beacon to himself. I've mentioned in the past that I love the power of words. So when you see a word, it can inspire you to, to be more, to have more courage or whatever it may be. And in this case here, by having his very first fragrance with the name of Cosette to remind him to be daring, it reminds him to step forward. When this fragrance was created, it was actually created in memory of his father. It was in 2002 and his father had just received that he had an incurable disease. In that moment, Pierre mentioned that he wanted to capture an essence of his father. He wanted to preserve the memory of his father, more than just taking a photo. I know that when my mother passed away, I had actually a message of her on my phone, and I kept that for the longest time, just to hear her voice, just to preserve a piece of her. In this case here, Pierre did the same thing by creating a fragrance that reminded him of his dad, and in this case, it was the smell of his cigar box. When you smell this fragrance, there is a very deep, resinous, woody tone that is reminiscent of a beautiful cigar case. Pierre never saw himself as a perfumer. In fact, him and his father had a business in which they were chemical engineers. Because of his training, he knew how to construct compositions and create an actual perfume. It was at a party that uh, he, he mentioned that he was a little bit out of place. He felt a fish out of water. And the hostess of the party came up to him and in usual chit chat, what is it that you do? And in that moment, in that spontaneous moment, he responded to her by saying, I'm a perfumer. Her natural response is, oh, really, what have you created? It just so happened that he had, because he would carry a vial of this perfume with him, again, in memory of his dad. And he said, oh, I've got this one here. The wife and also her husband fell in love with the scent profile. Shortly after, Pierre mentioned that he received the fax from the gentleman ordering 30 bottles of the actual fragrance. And it was then he realized that, hang on a second, there is something here. I obviously have a, a skill, a talent in this particular place. 2002 is when he created Cose. And then in 2010, he actually started his perfume business. Pierre Guillaume Perfumes Commence. So that's why you need the origin story. Now, I mentioned before that whilst I was at the boutique in Paris, and as Julien was explaining the different rhythm to the fragrances, he explained how the numbered perfumes work, meaning that all the fragrances have a different number code to it. In this case, this is 2.0, this is 2.1. And the essence of it is that the core structure is the same, or it, it stays within that family. In this case here, these are tobacco, woody fragrances. The difference with this one here, which is 2.1, and it's Cose Verde. If you love the fruitiness of the fig note, if you love the greenness of the fig note, then this fragrance is pure magic. I love the fact that this takes the core structure of Cose, which already is so glorious with that patchouli, ambriness, but now adds a green fruity component to it. The opening of this, this particular fragrance, again, is instant love. The moment you spray, this is now summertime, sunshine coming through. This is sparkling. This has, a, it, it brings you into spring. It brings you into a summer place instantly. I love wearing Cosé 2.0.
as a winter fragrance, but I love wearing Corsair 2.1 as a winter fragrance also. I love the fact that it does bring that level of sunshine into a, a cool day. When it dries down, it does have the very similar elements of Corsair. The difference now, it, it retains that level of greenness. On opening, you're getting a beautiful fig fruitiness component to it. That fruit is definitely there. It's also combined with lime. There is a bright effervescent quality to it. As it migrates, it does go down into a more of a green fig place. And then all those other beautiful elements that you're familiar with when it comes to Corsair, the wood, the patchouli, the spiciness begin to emerge and take shape. I find again that this fragrance here is six plus hours comfortably. For me now, the sillage and also its projection actually get amped up. I get beautiful trail on this. So it falls into a moderate and also its projection is definitely into a moderate. I have found a new love. It's always exciting finding something new and I've become a little bit infatuated with all things Pierre Guillaume. Whilst I was overseas, I did pick up a number of the fragrances. I love the creativity that has been instilled in this collection. I also love the fact that here's a man who started in a particular pathway and has now opened up to something brand new, the, the serendipity of that moment of creating something to remind himself of his father, now creating this whole new venture for him. So exciting, so exciting. If you are new to Pierre Guillaume, as I mentioned, start here. If you are familiar with Pierre Guillaume, please tell me the fragrances that you love from his collection. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you guys all on the next episode.